I think one way to see what a VNA does and how to use it is uh, if, if I just try and demonstrate by using it. Uh, so uh, here's a real world task and I'm just going to try going through it and uh, I won't be able to explain everything um, all in this video but um, hopefully the steps can make some sense. Um, so in this uh, situation I've, I've got a tiny uh, ceramic filter. These were popular in FM radios. This is a 10.7 megahertz ceramic filter uh, and uh, according to the data sheet this supports uh, input and output impedance of 300 ohms uh, for, for this to function properly um, and I want to make this into a filter which works with 50 ohm input and output uh, because then it's a bit more flexible for use in a lab environment. Uh, so what I'm going to do is take that and uh, fit that in here. Okay, and um, so this is cable connected up to the VNA. So what I could do if I just directly connected this to the input of this filter, so ground connection there and this side. Uh, well, that, that's the same as ground, and here is the input, and I can terminate the output with three hundred ohms for now. Okay. 300 ohms, the output. Right, so there's 300 ohms on the output and the input is connected to the VNA. And uh, what I'm going to do, uh, actually before I do that, I'm going to take the, the connections from the VNA and I'm going to just, this will make sense later, but I'm just going to plug this into uh, two, two rows here, which are not actually going anywhere. Uh, that resistor is there for a reason, but I'm not using, using that just yet. Uh, so it's just really going nowhere at the moment. I'm going to hit the calibrate button on here and uh, do a calibration. Continue. Okay, it says calibrate open, and this is an open circuit here. So I'm going to click continue. And that says calibrate short. So what I'm going to do is just short that here and click continue. All right. So I'm trying to get everything in focus. It's a bit hard. All right. And so that says calibrate load. So what I'm going to do is connect one end to each end of that resistor. And it's a 47 ohm, approximately 50 ohm res resistor there. Sorry, let me try and get that in focus. Okay, and then click continue. And it, now there's a spot right at the centre there. That's the M1. The M1 marker is set to 10.7 megahertz. And the start and finish, start and stop is set to 10.6 and 10.8 megahertz so basically um, 100 kilohertz either side of 10.7 megahertz which is the center frequency of this filter okay and if I unplug this that M1 has moved to the right there uh, that end indicates uh, open circuit that end indicates uh, 0 ohms resistance and in the middle is 50 ohms all right so now uh, back to this circuit here I'm going to connect this to ground here yeah. and connect this to the input. You can see where M1 is. Um, it's it's not quite open circuit but it's also not anywhere near the center. The aim it's like a game you've got to kind of move that M1 uh, around this chart it's called Smith chart move it around until it gets to the center here and there's some rules for how, how you can do that. So right now it's over there um, and uh, I can actually read it off there. It's about 373 ohm, ohms and a tiny bit of um, inductance. So anything uh, ab above the horizontal line is inductance and anything below is capacitance. Uh, so reactance is basically on uh, above and below the line and that horizontal line is uh, pure resistance. Okay, so, so that, uh, for me to be able to move this from here to here, Actually, let me just get a pen, it's a bit easier to point. 
Okay, so I'm gonna move from there to here. If I add a component in series, uh, for example, if I add capacitance, then it will follow the lines here. And if I add inductance, it'll follow the lines there. So basically these circles represent series reactants, whether that's capacitance down or inductance up. Um, if I put things in parallel, then the same thing happens, but it's, it's basically the inverse of uh, uh, this chart. So you gotta imagine instead of these circles here, they're originating from here. And that means that then that I can follow paths that follow curves in that direction. If it's a parallel inductance, then uh, that, that spot will move that way. And if it's a parallel capacitance, then it'll move that way. So if I wanna get from here to here, uh, I've got a few different ways of doing it. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and go down a path down here and then up across here. So to do that, uh, I know I need to go that way, which is a uh, parallel capacitance. So I'm just gonna just add a, a value and see where it goes. So there's M1 at the moment. Um, don't have many um, non-surface bound components actually. So I've got somewhere, yeah, I, I tried this before. So I've got 100 picofarads. I'm gonna put that in parallel on the input and see what happens. You can see it's, uh, it's moved down, um, down to here. Uh, what I want to do though is make it move a little bit more down so it's on that solid line. So that M1, if it moves down a little bit more, then I'll be able to add inductance in series and make it go that way. So, uh, so that 100 picofarads is not enough, uh, but it's close. So if I find the 22 picofarads somewhere. Uh, yeah, this one. And add that in parallel. So now I've got 122 picofarads there. And there it's now moved and it's pretty much on that line now. Okay, so now I know I need to put a series inductance to be able to go up that path. And uh, I've got a hand where I'm on here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is temporarily disconnect this. It'll just go back up there. And then add that to the circuit. So on the input, which is here. So put the ground back and I'll plug that here. You can see that M1 is actually really close now to that uh, center point and that's really pretty much good enough. Um, it's very hard to get it exactly there without um, trimmer inductors or capacitors uh, but this is a pretty good match now. The, the output from the VNA is matched to the input of the filter. Um, and the, the M1, you can see the lines coming off the other, either side of it. That's because the start and finish of this is, uh, has got a span of like 200 kilohertz. Um, but yeah, that's absolutely fine now. So now that I know that the, the input of that filter is matched to, uh, to 50 ohms, I can do repeat exactly the same circuit now on the other side as well. Okay, so now the same circuit is repeated on the output of the filter as well. Uh, so I've got the inductor in series and the capacitor in parallel, the same component values. Uh, and now you can see that uh, the M1, the marker has moved. Uh, it's no longer in the center, uh, but that's because obviously I've had to remove the 330 ohm terminating resistance on the filter. And now the filter has got nothing terminating it. So now if I take the 47 ohm resistor, close enough to 50 ohms. And uh, I put that on the output. Then let's see what happens. There we go. Back to where it was before. So that proves now that uh, once the output impedance uh, is at 50 ohms, then uh, the input is matched as well at 50 ohms. Now I've removed the output resistor. Uh, so there's no 50 ohm resistor here, but now it's terminated coming out there into the input of the spectrum analyzer. I've, I've changed from VNA mode to spectrum analyzer mode. 
So now uh, the, the input to the filter is connected to the tracking generator output from the spectrum analyzer and the output from the filter goes to the input of the spectrum analyzer. And I've now got a span of two megahertz across here and we can see here uh, that this is a uh, this bandpass filter is functioning as it should be because if we look at the amplitude here uh, uh, the tracking gener generator is set to minus 20 dBm and that level there exactly at 10.7 megahertz is minus 26.29 dBm so that's a difference of uh, uh, an insertion loss of 6.3 dBm and uh, that's well within the specification of 5.5 plus or minus 2 dBm um, is what the data sheet for that filter, uh, ceramic filter says. And also, uh, according to the data sheet at plus and minus 200 kilohertz from there, uh, the level should be at least 20 dBm down. Uh, and it's more than that. It's t minus 27 and minus 26.5 dB down. So that's correct too. To recap, uh, what actually happened was uh, I had the VNA and there's a cable attached to it and uh, open short load calibration was done to the end of the cable there and then at that point the filter was attached and uh, according to the data sheet this had 30, 330 ohms input and output impedance so it was terminated with 330 ohms and the VNA measured the input impedance there and it was possible then to notice that it was about here so uh, 330 is about 6 times 50 ohms, so 4, 5, 6 would go here. Uh, so that was the impedance, uh, but we wanted to get to 50 ohms, which is in the centre here. So I wanted to get from here to here, and I know that I can do this in several different ways, depending on if I put in either uh, a series inductance that way, or a series capacitance that way, or a shunt or parallel capacitance in that direction or a parallel inductance in that direction um, so I want to, I decided to go down this way and then across that way um, so uh, what I did was I added a capacitor 100 picofarads initially and that allowed the the Smith chart the the, um, the output to go to about here with 100 picofarads uh, but that wasn't enough so I added another 22 and that got me down to about here, uh, which was this line here. Um, so th this was the 122 picofarads. Um, and then I needed an inductance. So from that point, I added an inductance. And I just, um, I, I knew the, the right one to add because I'd uh, already um, d done the measurement before. Um, but if I didn't know it, I would have just added an inductance. And if it wasn't enough, I would have added more. And if I'd overshot that way, then I would have reduced inductance uh, to get to that point here. And it happens to be 1.8 micro Henry's there. Um, so that then meant that I had the VNA and uh, I had the 1.8 micro Henry's and the 122 peak farads and the output was still terminated with 330 ohms and this then allowed the VNA by the way this measurement is called a S11 measurement um, because uh, this happens to be port 1 of the VNA and we're only measuring port 1 uh, we're, we're not using the um, uh, port 2 uh, for this measurement and uh, so from here I was able to see the 50 ohms uh, input impedance now at this point and then I was able to just repeat this circuit on the other side as well because this is symmetrical. Uh, it doesn't always have to be, but in this case it was uh, because the data sheet said that both the input and output was 330 ohms. That means that now here's the final circuit here and uh, this could actually, in theory, all be boxed up and you'd have like a, a, a module with 50 ohms input here, 50 ohms output impedance here and the whole module then acts as a filter and then it can be terminated with 50 ohms and to see the 50 ohms input impedance correctly here. Then I just uh, switch to spectrum analyzer mode and 
in that case, uh, a tracking generator generates a signal and I can see the output on the spectrum analyzer here. And uh, from that, I was able to match um, the, the spectrum analyzer output uh, with the data sheet uh, to see what the um, insertion loss was and uh, what the um, signal level was on the, in the stop band. And that's it. I hope that was useful. Thanks for watching.